Adobe adds Nano Banana to Photoshop's generative fill, Spline gets timeline animation features, and ZBrush tees some new retopology workflows. It's Motion Mondays, and I know what you're thinking. What would Joey look like as a Disney World style character mascot? Blind the web-based 3D design app just added a timeline feature that totally changes how you can work inside of Spline. So previously, you couldn't animate in Spline at all. Well, you could, but you were just stuck with basic mouse over events and simple interactions. Well, now you can add keyframes and animate properties like position, rotation, and scale, and then adjust those animation curves just like in After Effects. You can then trigger all of the animation with events too, like mouse over, click, and even use a start event that plays the animation when the scene first loads. You can even export a video with customizable duration, frames per second, and resolution settings. Now this update puts Spline slightly closer to Rive, but with the ability to do all that kind of rive stuff in a full 3D environment. But for motion designers building web experiences, especially 3D ones, this removes a major limitation and opens up a lot more possibilities in Spline. Now hot in the heels of the announcement that GSG and Kitbash are merging, GSG announced that they're coming out with GSG Studio 1.5 and five new asset collections. Studio 1.5 has some really solid quality of life improvements like playlists that allow you to create custom playlists and save certain assets that you use all the time. They've also added automatic updates, so no more of that manual downloading. There's also a smarter randomizer that respects user-defined filters, and they also got the latest Cinema 4D 2026 connector app ready to go. The five new collections include photogrammetry scanned rough ground textures like gravel and sand. The update also includes decor models like frames and board games for product renders, and 32 handcrafted gemstone materials so you can be Thanos too. To access these new assets, just update to the latest Studio app. Just goes to show that even though GSG and Kitbash merged, it didn't change anything about how GSG keeps making really cool stuff for motion designers. Now on to some school motion news. We are approaching a pretty incredible milestone, almost 10 thousand critiques delivered, which works out to be about a thousand critiques a month since we launched All Access. And you might ask, how the heck do we pull that off? Well, it's because on All Access, you get unlimited critique, unlimited, which is awesome. And that's how you get a thousand a month. And one of the coolest parts that not a lot of people know about is that you can actually view your classmates work. So you can go and check out what everyone's doing, get inspired, learn from their mistakes and their wins. And you can view not only your own feedback from a TA, but feedback TAs have given to other students as well. So this is all us learning together in a collaborative space. We also just wrapped up our September portfolio review led by our TAs, Ian and Jen. Our next one's on October 23rd. Coming up next month, we have a UX motion design workshop with a senior motion designer from Google doing a deep dive into UX design. Plus, we have just dropped a video about building the ultimate Unreal Engine machine alongside Puget Systems. And you actually enter to win thousands of of dollars in prizes, so be sure to check that out over on our blog, and be sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our videos. ZBrush was in the news just recently because they teased new retopology workflows coming later this year. You're gonna be able to create individual faces, place vertex points, expand geometry with edge loops, and more. They're also adding a new UV editor that will allow you to manage UVs directly within ZBrush for desktop. Now, this is gonna be Pretty awesome to have retopo tools, especially when it comes to ZBrush for iPad, that hopefully maybe removes the need to use other apps like Cozy Blanket, but it'll be interesting to see how ZBrush's update compares to Cozy Blanket, considering they've kind of been cornering the market on retopo on the iPad for years and years now. Keeping with the whole sculpting theme, Nomad Sculpt for Desktop just officially launched. Nomad used to be only for mobile tablets. It's kind of like a more pared down version of ZBrush that I'd say is a little bit more easier for newcomers to get into. It's kind of like working backwards from ZBrush's approach where ZBrush had to move from desktop to iPad. Nomad's kind of doing the opposite, moving from iPad to desktop. And it's basically a one-to-one -one app, so you can easily move projects between iPad and the desktop. And if you want to grab it, it's not going to decimate your wallet. 
Get it? That, that's a that's a sculpting joke. It's a one-time purchase of $35 for a perpetual license. And you can grab Mac and PC versions right now. All right, it's time to check out some incredible work from across the interwebs. First up is Null Studio, a new Paris-based studio that hasn't been around long, but they're already killing it. The website design is super slick. The interaction, the animations on their site itself are impressive just as impressive as their client work. And you can see this really clean mix of 2D and 3D in their work for this Team Vital project, which seems like it's eSports related. And their website is just a perfect example of a studio not only showcasing great design in their work, but in their presentation of their work too on their website. Next up is Odd Beast out of Kentucky, who created the opening titles for this year's Half Res Conference. So Half Res has recently been getting studios to create their opening titles each year, and Odd Beast absolutely nailed this one out of the park with these light projections on these kind of like alien looking landscapes. They use Quad Spinner's Gaia for terrain, Houdini for simulations, and Cinema 4D with Octane for final assembly and rendering. And finally, as a massive Mega Man fan, where are my Mega Man fans at? I had to include this incredible fan film by Dan G from Seoul, Korea. This single person project looks like a video game cutscene and gives me all those nostalgic vibes from all the retro Mega Man games. The level of craft here is mega cool and I absolutely love the breakdown on his Behance page too, so be sure to check it out. Links in the description. Adobe was busy last week with a bunch of AI updates, mostly around the Firefly tools. Now the big news is that Photoshop beta is adding Nano Banana to its generative fill capabilities. In the examples, they showed how you can change fonts in photos instantly while maintaining visual consistency, which is Nano Banana's strength. Adobe's integration of all these external AI models kind of feels like they're waving the white flag on their internal Firefly model, which is kind of interesting in itself. But it's cool that you can now use tools like Nano Banana inside of Photoshop with all the tools and controls that you're used to. Another big update is Adobe Firefly video adding transparent background generation. And one of the biggest downsides of previous AI video models was you couldn't generate an alpha channel off of anything that you created. And this is kind of a huge deal for anyone who needs to composite this AI generated elements to their scenes. Now, this is kind of the thing that I, I think is the sweet spot for AI, where you're using it in this almost stock asset generation kind of way, and then having an artist put it all together exactly the way they want. But I would say the biggest announcement was Firefly boards launching worldwide. Now think of Firefly boards as an iterative brainstorming app that's powered by AI, because of course, they've added tons of new models beyond just Firefly. They just recently put in Luma AI's Ray 3, and they just added Runway Aleph, or Alf, Alf, Aleph, I'm not sure, and Moon Valley's Mary, Mari, Mari, for video generation. Now, I tested this myself with the Gus the Pug character, started with an illustrator drawing that I made myself, and then used it to generate different poses, turned him into a mascot costume, and then created videos of him walking and waving. And the results are equal parts like WOW and WTF, probably not putting motion designers out of uh, business just yet, but as a rapid ideation tool, it's pretty crazy. And I think I'm, I'm gonna be using it, you know, for concepting alongside things like Pinterest. Now onto our student of the week, Mario Umenzor, who just completed Premiere for Motion Designers. Mario mentioned how the course has been a total game changer for him. He started thinking that you just kind of pick up a few extra couple tips, but he realized that he's basically been driving the, the whole time with the emergency brake on. He learned smarter workflows, shortcuts he didn't know existed, and storytelling tricks that made his edits feel more intentional. Mario mentioned he's been a motion designer for quite a while, and this course really helped sharpen his skills and taught him a new approach to projects and, and actually reminded him why he loves this craft. So it's kind of interesting because those editing skills can directly translate to number one motion design work, but then also cutting your own reel too. Now you can check out more of Mario's work at marioumenzor.com. Congrats on being student of the week. It's super awesome to see how you can beef up your editing chops and have that actually level up your entire creative process in the, in the meantime. Dash Studio just released a pretty beefy 1.9.2 update. If you're unfamiliar, Dash is a world building plugin for Unreal Engine that provides tools and thousands of free PBR assets to streamline environment creation. Really, if you're doing any type of world building at all in Unreal, 
you need this. This update includes a new mesh pattern tool for creating customizable tileable patterns from any asset. They've also added direct integration of the ABO and base mesh 3D libraries, which for people who or like me, and those letters mean nothing. Uh, it's basically a massive collection of free, high quality models and clean base meshes that are now accessible right in the content browser. New weather effects let you add procedural rain and snow with adjustable parameters. The rainfall and snowfall effects look super good. And of course, everything customizable. They've also added splines that can go along a surface so you can scatter elements along paths using those splines, much like Cinema 4D's MoGraph tools. This update really expands on the already massive collection of tools and assets in Dash, making it one of the best and biggest world building plugins for Unreal Engine 5. And finally, just a reminder that we're one month away from the XR Motion Conference in New York City on October 25th at NYU Tandon. If you're in the New York area or anywhere on the East Coast, or the West Coast. This is gonna be a really fun one. I'm gonna be speaking alongside incredible people. Got Patrick Foley, better known as Patrick 4D, the digital chef, Michelle Cortez from Meta's Metaverse team, and John Lepore, a four-time Emmy-nominated creative thought leader. There's also workshops from Shane Fu, Lyle Hintz, and Danny Pihar that are gonna be awesome. So if you wanna go, the lovely people over at XR Conference were kind enough to give us a special discount code. So if you wanna save 15% off tickets, use code SCHOOLMOTION, no spaces. It's gonna be a full day of keynotes, workshops, tech demos, networking, and even LED wall karaoke, which let's be honest, is the only real reason why I'm going. It's gonna be a perfect opportunity to connect with other motion designers, learn some new stuff, and maybe even meet some of the people that you've been following online for a while. Hope to see you there. And that's it for this week's Motion Mondays. Be sure to check out our Ultimate Unreal Engine workstation video and enter to win all the prizes. And be sure to sign up for an accountability group by October 4th. All right, it's time for me to go and uh, practice my LED wall karaoke skills. I'll see you next time. Have a great week. See you next Monday.